uh, okay. So, hi everyone. This is Subha Mirza. I'm the founder, owner, and lead trainer of uh, on-time training and consultancy services. And today we are going to discuss the or share the uh, uh, success story and the uh, lessons learned of our uh, PFMP mentee, Philip Goodell. Uh, he has uh, uh, passed out from, uh, like, uh, he has just cleared his uh, PFMP uh, a month ago. And, uh, um, of course, uh, he has uh, chosen the uh, on-time training and consultancy for that. But before we proceed with uh, that, uh, let me uh, formally welcome all of you. Thank you very much for joining and thank you for taking out time to join us and uh, listen to the useful insights and the uh, knowledge that uh, Philip has acquired uh, throughout his journey. Um, let me quickly introduce my company and myself. Uh, On-time training and consultancy services is a professional training and consultancy site up. Uh, we are completely the followers of PMI standards and we do provide the professional training and mentoring for the PMI credentials like uh, PMP, PGMP, PFMP, ACP, RMP, etc. Like all the uh, credentials by PMI. Uh, we are also consultants for project program and portfolio management. And uh, we do provide consultancy to organizations, groups, and the individuals, which includes PMO consultancy, individual consultancy, career counseling, and advising uh, the uh, best practices regarding project and program management and uh, interview preparation for the individuals uh, uh, regarding project and program management uh, jobs. So if you need any such services, you can contact us. I'm going to share the communication channels in the uh, chat box uh, in a while. Regarding myself, uh, I'm Suba Mirza. I'm based in Pakistan. Um, I have a professional career, a career of about 17 years. I uh, have done uh, the corporate uh, uh, like the corporate jobs and the corporate, uh, uh, I have served through the corporates uh, uh, for about 16 years. Uh, I started off as a software engineer and then like uh, for the past around eight to 10 years, I have been in the project program and portfolio management related uh, roles and uh, services. For the past one year, I have been working full time in my own venture, which is uh, on-time training and consultancy services. Um, so uh, on the certification uh, ground, I am PMI Triple P certified, which means that I am PMP, PGMP, and uh, PFMP certified. I am also PMI RMP certified. I'm also ATP trainer for PMP uh, trainings, and I am PSM certified as well. And recently, I have earned my uh, project program and portfolio governance professional certification by P3GQA. So uh, I have like uh, a lot uh, already in my uh, portfolio and I'm still uh, in the process of learning more. So this session is purely about the portfolio management professional certification and uh, everything uh, that you know need to know about the portfolio management and how uh, um, Philip uh, has uh, uh, like got benefited with this certification and what uh, was his challenges and what was his uh, opportunities throughout this uh, journey. This is about uh, uh, totally about it. So before uh, we move forward with the agenda, Philip, uh, I think let's get started with your brief introduction and over to you. Okay, thank, thanks, Tuba. So for me, um, name Philip Gooday, as, as Tuba already mentioned. So I'm uh, currently working at a director of PMO in one in, in a company called Inforp. So um, kind of managing a little bit of portfolio, but also programs. Uh, before that one, I was working for the Microsoft as well as as programming portfolio manager. And um, during that journey, obviously, I'm, I'm now 3P certifi certified and um, maybe just a little bit on decision why portfolio management. So I was managing a lot of projects and programs and uh, kind of obviously when you're in the company, you want to you want to learn and grow and learn and grow. And uh, as mentioned, I was flipping the companies and had exposure to a bunch of let's say methodologies and some of them were kind of confusing a little bit and, and contradictory so I started exploring a bit more about the PMI so then I got uh, into the PGMP and obviously after the going through the PGMP I decided to go through the uh, to the PFMP certification so uh, for me personally PFMP I found it to be the most difficult one that I have so people say also the uh PGMP is difficult or PMP is or other others are difficult. But for me, the PFMP was the most difficult one because I had to unlearn 
-hmm. everything what I've learned before to be able to actually to um, go into the uh, into the mindset of the PFMP. And my journey was kind of, I think it was a, I don't know if you can call naive, but I was a, um, after the decision that I want to go to the PFMC certification, obviously the first step was, okay, I want to search the mentors, right? And um, I was in this in, in two steps and I'll come also how I actually found Tuba. Uh, so my first step was going through the LinkedIn and a network and asking about the mentors, because obviously doing this certification without a mentor, I'm, I'm saying it's not possible, but it's very difficult, right? And it's really challenging. So I would definitely recommend mentor. So I was uh, searching for the mentors, getting the recommendations, and I got a mentor, first one. So Tuba is my second, or even I would say third mentor. Um, I got a recommendation for the mentor and mentorship program, but I've also uh, got the recommendation to go to and get some mock exams. And the mock exams, I actually went to Udemy, uh, which is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar. If not, it's an online um, portal or learning portal where you have a whole bunch of trainings and, and uh, uh, instructions and instructor led seminars where you can subscribe and also get the content. So there I actually found Tuba's mock exam because it was recommended by a couple of people. So I enlisted into the mentorship, my first mentorship program and also got uh, the Tuba's uh, mock program, right? So this is how actually I first was introduced with Tuba. And um, I actually enrolled in the uh, my PFMP mentoring program started in November last year. Um, but by the time of the end of the year, December, I actually realized that th that's really not working for me. Um, it's because the mentorship program itself, it's, uh, it's kind of it's also a really good tip or maybe a caution. Be really careful when you ask for the um, credentials and recommendations. Do really do your due diligence, right? So mine was kind of heavily promoted mentor and uh, was uh, by many people said, and also if you check out the LinkedIn groups and the, the online, it was really the, the ads were all over the place, right? Like the best, the best in class. But when we started the program, I actually, it's not even, I felt, I realized that there is a big gap of, knowledge there's a big gap of uh, experience and and extremely extremely big gap in terms of the guidance mentorship and support and in parallel while i was doing this program i was actually going through the two buzz, two buzz uh, questions which you also uh, get through her uh, uh, mentorship program so i actually purchased it on or got it on, on the separate one so i actually got them apart and by going through the questions, uh, I actually got even more insight and a knowledge, gained knowledge and learned through those questions than I got from actually my mentor. And um, in parallel, what I also do, and this helped me a lot in my uh, studies as well, I also got the mock exams from, um, there's a, uh, there is a, I forgot the name of the company, but they, they specialize only on the mock exam. So I actually got a, a dump of the exams and, um, basically what these questions are without without the explanations they're only pure answer in most cases they're not correct so I use these questions also try to steer the learning right and through these questions I realized that my mentor that was really not I would not say it doesn't have a clue but wasn't helping me a lot was not helping me progress but it was actually causing me more and more confusion um, then I decided to stop that mentorship program and uh, Basically, I reached out to Tuba and uh, we had the first initial discussions. And and uh, so and I was also talking to Tuba while running the mocks because I, because I had a couple of, let's say, questions about the mocks that she also uh, uh, provided. And we actually already started there to have the uh, conversation and discussions about the general, the concepts of the PFMP and also general, the, the theory. And I, I saw from the from the replies that Tuba provided and the support, even back then I was not in a mentorship program of hers, but she was really in a sense already mentoring me by supporting the answers to, answers to my, my questions to her, uh, resolving some clarifications that I had and misunderstanding. So I understood already from the beginning that this could be a good, good thing or good path to go. So 
when I stopped my, my mentorship, I reached out to Tuba and explained my situation, saying, I'm already three and a half months in the PFMP. I'm uh, feeling I have no progress. I'm, I'm totally, I would say, really, I was in, in a bad place, totally confused. And already, uh, I don't know, but you guys, my situation was uh, working a job which is eight to 10 hours a day, plus, you know, the family, then you really invest your time and energy, right, into learning. And then, it was kind of kind of disappointing really it's really stressful so i explained the situation to him i said ah no problem you know we will get it done it's going to be no issues and um actually there i decided okay i'm going to go forward with tuba so that was uh, if i don't mistake tuba that was somewhere in, in march right beginning of the march we started yeah beginning it was, of the march, uh, yeah, it was uh, beginning of the uh, april, so, april it was the beginning beginning of the app Beginning of the April, really yeah. beginning of the April. Okay, so two, two, uh, two months. <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, two months. Oh, later, really? <laughs> you did that. Yeah. Okay, so wow, that is that is. A, I, I did. I haven't realized that it was such a short time. So anyhow, I, re, I engaged Tuba, and Tuba gave me. So, what what? So she gave me access to her to her package, uh, which contained the the training videos, which contained also some materials, including the mock exams, and also the, the guiding, the theory that Tuba summarized and the way how she prepared these learning materials, even though they were summarized, they're really clear, really easy to understand and really easy to follow. So um, comparing, comparing the previous mentor and, and this early stages of, of uh, uh, engaging Tuba in her program was after the three and a half months of the previous mentor, I was more confused. And after the two weeks of Tuba's materials and going through them, I, 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 I like understood the stuff. I understood the theory. It was really explained. And the explanation that Tuba gave was were logical, pragmatical, exam-based, but also uh, practically based, so experience-based, right? So basically when you follow the theory, it really, she connects the theory to the uh, to the practice, but also connects with the with the different con different parts of the PFP. So she doesn't go through through the theory like page by page or or or, or concept by concept. She really tries to connect everything to one story. So from the beginning, from the first second of the tutorial and and the and the, and the trainings until the end, basically have constantly you are refreshing everything that you have done in the, in the beginning mid at the end right so at the end of the trainings you get really that full cycle and full picture of the understanding what pfmp is right so which at the end right plus the <clears throat> mock exams and uh, so now i realize actually it was april because i passed the pfmp in in june so in a, within the two months uh, of tubas program right and as i mentioned i have like a, on the average 10 hour job per day so i really don't have a lot of time for for learning and and for this um uh, extra activities if you will plus the family so in a, within the two and months you travel i was a able lot to well, right? pass the pfmp with you travel a lot as well yeah and i travel i traveled yeah i travel but um yeah for the world yeah in, in this time frame when i was actually learning i was not traveling as much as before so Let's say I had some time. So if I would travel, right, obviously you're on site uh, uh, at the project site. So, okay, you have some time, extra time, but I was actually at, at home. <laughs> so the family was there. So there was the time for learning and, you know, self-focus was a little bit more limited in that sense. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that even with that limited time that you have, the way how Tuba prepares some materials and also the mentoring, right? And, and for me, there was a, there was a key. Not only the materials, okay, she she creates a great materials and that's all fine. But the key was even if you are, especially in this remote environment, right? When you're going through the materials and you're getting your view and idea of the certain concepts and the theory, right? Being have, being in a position to have somebody that can answer your questions and you know have patience to explain in a way and in a certain way until you understand. And I think I was quite. Uh, uh, I would not use the word brutal, but I was quite extensive with my questions and I would not stop until I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm clear on understanding what actually the concept of the theory means. And I was really asking for sometimes, sometimes I was even, uh, I remember I was apologizing to Tuva for asking too many times, almost the same question, but it landed, right? So now what this resulted with, 
again to summarize with, with the materials and, and the, the 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 concept that tuba has for for her program plus her mentorship and the support and way how she approaches her mentees i was able to pass the pfmp uh next to working within the two months and there was i got the above above target in all the areas right so i don't think without without being exposed to tuba as a mentor right materials that's okay but really that mentorship and that support i don't think i would be able to pass this so for me that was a you know thank you really, so much really uh, for person. your appreciation and the kind words it means a lot to me and uh, i think uh, it's going to be helpful for those who are aspiring for the pfmp uh, however uh, the participants uh, also would like to know that how after acquiring the PM, pfmp credential how you think it's going to be helpful for your professional career, for your next steps? Uh, and you are already working as a PMO director, right? In, in a good organization. So uh, how do you think it's uh, you are able to connect whatever you have learned during uh, throughout this journey to your practical experience? Because this is a very common question that we get that, uh, what is the practical implementation of all these uh, concepts? and does that even exist or it's all the theory in the books so what do you want to say in that regard that how pfmp is going to help you in your professional job and the career okay so uh maybe so the, how to talk, how to answer this one so in a short answer to my current job and career no right so the pfmp is really broad and for example if i take the 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 PFMP certification, what PFMP actually entails. And, and right, so when you when you think about it, and at least this is my that was my approach, right? I have the PMP and uh, I was managing the programs. And the next step obviously is a portfolio, right? And this really depends from the organization to the organization what a portfolio is, right? In my current organization, portfolio equals to the uh, ownership that is aligned with the senior vice president because they have the, the they have the sense because I'm, I'm in a service organization service oriented organization i have our own erp systems right and our basically portfolio is based on the product and the industry right so in that sense you have the pnl responsibility so portfolio in that sense is a little bit different um and also for my current role uh, i am let's say managing the small portfolio but the way how the portfolio is managed is, is really not aligned not according to the pmi now, we, the, my organization is following the PMI and we have the, the, the whole, let's say, ways of working and, and the concepts aligned to the PMI. But as mentioned, when it, when it comes to the portfolio, it's a little bit different. So how I see the portfolio actually helping you guys certification. And yeah, my organization is not a corporate, it's privately owned. But what I've, what I've also understood from uh, a couple of colleagues of mine who have changed organizations and, and have been enlisted in a corporate, will be corporate organizations. It really helps. It helps you drive, it get, gets you uh, certain doors open. And what I see also for the PM, PFMP, so for me, there were there were actually two reasons, right? Obviously was for me, it was the next step and I wanted to learn more and uh, this too, but I think what for her, I think it's more of a, of a, of a business, right? To, to, to get the certifications for me, it was really, trying to broaden the knowledge, understanding, and my, uh, I would say, confidence in the general in the project management and, and everything related to, the, to that area. So for me, it was kind of logical to go there because of, uh, you know, what's understanding what's the next step. But also what I understand is uh, if you aspire for a career change or um, um, changing the position either vertically upwards or, or horizontally, that, that will definitely help you, right? It, I've, yeah. I've, for example, in my where I'm, where I'm located, right? We also have currently now the, uh, for example, job openings where we really specify certain certifications from the PMI, right? So if you don't have them, you're even not eligible to apply for the for the role, right? So in that sense, it really is helpful, and I see this benefiting me for the in next maybe five to ten years, but not now. Yeah. But I'm happy to have the certification now because of the knowledge and and the time. Excellent. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, because uh, one should be actually looking forward to the next four to five years down the lane. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. I also work on the same line. So Philip, uh, one, uh, because uh, there are a few people in the participant uh, list who are currently actively working for their PFMP. They are already 
enrolled uh, in this uh, program and they are uh, they are actually preparing for PFMP. So there's a very common question that people want to know from those who have passed that out, especially recently passed that out, that how much time they have spent maybe daily on weekly or uh, like what was their uh, like what was the process that they adopted like uh, uh, like because you know usually when people are up for pfmp they're usually very busy like the way the way you used to be uh, other people are also very busy uh, because uh, they're working in some senior management role or even above that and they have family they have other commitments so they don't get much time for preparation so what advice do you want to give to them that how they should be preparing i know consistency dedication that's definitely the key uh, but other than that like uh, from a timetable perspective uh, what did you really do i know you have uh, really been into that uh, since nine, uh, november last year but i think actively uh, you have started preparing for that from april when you started with me then you started from the scratch and uh, did all of the things like the videos and the mocks and the slides and everything and the standard reading as well. So how much time did you really spend in these two months time that you spent with me for the preparation? Okay, so for me, it's it's uh, a little bit hard to really to answer the overall timeline. So I would say consistency, definitely. And I was I was doing it three to three hours on the average per day right that, that would be the key but uh, to be really honest uh since the november i i did the same so i was a i was a consistent using through the sub so consistent on every single day regardless if it's a weekend or working day if we was traveling or not traveling i try to have that on the average three three hours per day and uh, in the first couple of months for me was so november my first mentor there was uh it was really frustrating because I was I was really spending the time and into trying to learn and understand, but I was not able to connect the dots. So I think when I when I actually started with you with the, in the April, um, I finished the whole studying right within I think it was two and a half weeks or something or or, or three weeks in total with that that approach, right? So it really depends on you, depends on the consistency. But I, I would say if you really have some kind of um previous knowledge of the of the pfmp or generally the pmi and the concepts and and the theory you can do this in i would say three weeks with three hours per day right it should not be a problem but as mentioned for me it was a i think the initial november time was really frustrating because i, I need to unlearn learn what i've learned before right so that's why for me this this exam exactly was for the mindset point of view was very difficult although time and, and results show different story but it was really really frustrating for me to be honest but I was said three hours per day and um, within the three weeks you should be able to to get so, uh, roughly uh, in terms of the learning. four hours for uh, concepts and theory and videos and everything uh, the, uh, and yeah, roughly yeah. the same time yeah. for mock practice and uh, like you know the like the practicing thing right? Uh, those 1,200, yeah. 1,400 questions that we provide. So that's going to be an, a, a yeah. good enough uh, timeline, like 1.5 to 2 months is going to be enough timeline when you are working, when you have other stuff to take care of. And in parallel to that, uh, 2 months roughly is going to... Um, on average, as a mentor, I provide uh, an estimate of around 100 hours uh, of a study, which includes like all the concepts, maybe by studying the standard or maybe by listening to the videos provided by your mentor uh, along with the slides and the concepts by PMI followed by some practice in the form of mocks and uh, simulator exam and this and that. So that's going to be like enough, uh, enough uh, time, like on average 100. At times people do that earlier than that. At times people want to spend a, a, a few more hours, but on average, a hundred hours is uh, like uh, a good enough time for uh, preparing PMI credentials like PGMP or PFMP, et cetera. Uh, so Philip, uh, the next thing uh, that also uh, people would like to know is what was your overall exam experience when you were writing the exam? Um, like whatever preparation you have done, were you able to connect to that? Uh, the concepts that you have acquired throughout this process, was that enough to answer any of the question that was presented to you during the exam? 
what was the important areas that one should be focusing on. We are not uh, really asking you to quote any question specifically from the exam, just like journal uh, perspective, because uh, there are many people who are going to the PMI exam for the very first time when they are doing their PFRP. They have not really uh, gone for mm -hmm. any other credential. Like I used to be having those uh, students as well who actually uh, joined PMI by their PFMP. So they are very curious to know that how does the exam look like, like the environment, the time management, the pressure handling, like all of that stuff. So would you like to shed some light on that? Yep. So um, what was the, so I, I need to compare this, the, your mentorship with the, with the previous one, because I think it's it's very important also for answering this question. So one of the, one of the concepts that you guys are gonna gonna get is if you go for the pm uh standard for the program portfolio management right there are stuff in the exam that's even not listed there one of the things like the balance scorecard for example it's you no know, maybe mentioned in one or two words and i've had for example two questions really asking for some specifics on on, on that topic so tuba also really mentions this in, in her materials and um, that's why it's again very important to to also learn stuff that you not have only in the book but really also apart from it so really like additional studies and in the previous for example the mentor even didn't have that one and when i asked about the topic even he didn't was able to say really the concepts around it so um that was one topic right not only materials but really spend some time on extra researching and, and reading from the internet and what is really good to provide also the links provides the guidance on some topics that you need additionally maybe to read and to check so that's one thing and i had uh, as mentioned two questions so that was quite quite important and good that i actually followed the guidance then another topic that actually came in and had a couple of those those are the the calculations right and uh, for example if i if i compared the tuba and the exam preparation with the previous mentor, he he was not even able to provide me a single example of the calculation. He even didn't know, uh, for example, what is a, um, I forgot another, the, the, I think it's composite index. He even yeah, didn't know what, what it is, right? And in my exam, I had it, uh, exactly. And in my exam, I had two questions on that one. And I remember that was one of the first topics that I actually started chatting with tuba because I, I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm, be, I'm like, really strong in the so, so much debate on that when you are not really my mentor and we were just yeah. having that LinkedIn chat, we used to have so much debate on that. Yeah. 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 So that was, that was one of the points for me that was kind of in the first, in the first mentor was alarm. And actually then I was uh, trying to figure out what is the formula. And then that was my first interaction with Tuba. And um, also the, so the, one of the key components is really the calculations that Tuba has some, some, uh, not some examples and also the mocks that she has there the calculations are really tricky right you can have one or two words that actually change the complete mm. uh, calculation how it how it is done so paying attention really to the question so they have uh, if you if this is your first exam on, on a with a pmi then uh, maybe you're not familiar so they they have a scenario questions and only one word can really change the meaning of the question right and what the answer could be and that was one of the things that really uh, I would advise is go one or two times to the mock exams and, and uh, through the preparation, actually Tuba mentions which ones you should go through. And uh, I've had in, in my exam, I had one or two or maybe even three questions that are really like really 99% similar to the mock exam question. So that kind of helped me in the sense of the time management and also the uh, going through the questions, right? Because they, they felt familiar and then, Right, you don't need to spend time on really focusing on rereading the question, understanding what you're really asked for. But you know, you went through the question already to the mock exams. I had two bagos for her materials, also for a couple of questions that I had one or two also in the exam as well. So it comes familiar. So going through the mock exams, it's really for my was uh, my experience was really really helpful, and that's why I would I would recommend also as a, as a third of, third one really go through these mock exams, take this really seriously. It's okay to go through the videos, videos as mentioned, really easy to follow it, feel like, okay, I get it. But it's only at that point of time when you start these mock exams and, and you know, put yourself in the shoes, okay, what the situation on exam is gonna be. And they start really, you know, you're under the pressure, you're, you're nervous and they start, you know, playing mind, tricky tricks with your mind and top in a way of how they 
post the question, right? So go through the mock exams one or two times. That's really going to help you a lot through the exam. So remember, mock exams, uh, uh, then... Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry to cut you off, but uh, how was your experience with our Udemy mocks? Because that is something where we started from, uh, like you and I started from. So uh, the, the yeah. mock that I have uh, published on Udemy platform, what is your uh, personal opinion about those mocks? Uh, would you like to say something? Because that is a like publicly available mock. Uh, out of yeah. the 1400 questions uh, that I provide for my students, those 200 questions is publicly available. Anybody can purchase them. Even if they do not want to go for my complete mentorship package, they can go for like just that uh, question answer set on Udemy. Uh, so what is your opinion about that? Well, it's very helpful, but I would... Um, so it's really helpful. The explanation is really detailed. It really guides you in a sense how you should think and approach the, the the question because the explanation that's provided also provides not only the correct answer, but also the explanation why the other answers are not correct. So I think they're really good in terms of the content. Um, what I would definitely recommend really to take the mentorship. So it's not that I'm, uh, I'm here, right? Because I'm, I'm getting paid, but uh, seriously, I've, I've had some really tough, situations and, and bad experiences both with the mentors trying with the wrong mentor trying without the mentor on the, one of the, the the pmi exams and to be honest it really it was um, i would not say a waste of time but you can really save a lot of time by enrolling with a good mentor and if you have a good support right so for me uh, this was after a really long time so pmp i i took once and I passed it and then that was with a mentor and then I decided okay that's easy I don't need a mentor and then I went to three six six so the next six attempts that I had on a pm uh, with a pmi for the certification were not successful mm -hmm. and uh, the so then I passed and obviously half the ones but PFMP was not then the one that I said, okay, I'm going to go with a mentor this time because I don't have time. Really, I had I had tight year schedule. So for me, it was really now, if I don't do this now, then, you know, it's going to work. Uh, in the and long Chris, uh, one more thing uh, that probably people would yeah. like to know is, uh, because that that is uh, probably the question that uh, would be coming from the audience side as well in the question answer session. So probably uh, the, let's cover that uh, uh, like before mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. People usually want to know that out of all the mocks that you have practiced, like uh, you have practiced uh, three to four main sets of the mocks, uh, people like to know that which mocks was very much near to the uh, real exam. Uh, not really uh, the same question is going to appear in the exam. Of course, that doesn't happen. But at times you find the relatedness. So uh, most of the people say that the green book usually is very helpful in the real exam. Uh, the, the, the very common set of questions which are helpful in the exam. Now, it's not that the same mm -hmm. question is going to appear, but people usually say that the green book is helpful. So what is your opinion? Which set of mocks was really helpful in the exam? Not from the concepts perspective only, but from the wording, from the overall idea, from the scenarios. Uh, what, do you, what would you like to say? Because that's going to help uh, the mentees who are actively preparing or who probably have booked their exam and they are going to sit in the exam this month or the next month. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question is from your materials, right? From your set. No, no, uh, the overall material. You can mention green book. You can General. mention okay. uh, yeah, uh, any other. Story. Okay. Okay. So from, from the materials, the, the closest that Tuba has for me was the PGM 30. So it's a set of the questions that you have. So from the green book, um, maybe I had one, but uh, more of them that I had was PGM 30, but even more I had from my question bag that I had. They were the really the most closest one to the exam. So, to be honest, I think I that because of my question bank that I had, uh, I was able to pass quickly around about 50 or 60 percent of the questions because they're really similar. They were not the same. But they're really similar. But so the idea actually, was, was similar. Uh, like uh, maybe the wordings are same, the op op uh, options are same, but the yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. So that it's only maybe change of the one word, which actually saved me time in a sense of reading the whole question, right? And trying to understand what, what is being asked. 
because the 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 text as mentioned there is a one word change right the the, the answers are the same and then you can spend really for your the time that you focus on the on the question was not an overall scenario it's more really what you're being asked for so that was that was really helpful but and it's not really the case uh, philip that uh, probably people think that okay they are this is some something very similar that we have seen in the mock exam maybe the answer is this mm -hmm. one word can change the answer as well maybe you have seen something similar yeah. Where, yeah. Uh, in in the question answer said b was answer but maybe in in this exam c is the answer maybe just because of the reason that yeah. uh, something has been changed which has actually changed the answer so it's not about memorization it's about the right connectivity of the yeah. concept and the right yeah. understanding and your experience matters and works a lot uh, in this yeah. uh, overall yeah. thing so yeah. just keep keep that in mind uh, this is the advice for those people who are actively preparing uh, their exam uh, that please do not memorize anything it's not about your memory this is not a memory test this is your experience test actually that how well you are able to put yourself in that scenario and how well you are able to apply the, uh, those uh, knowledge base and the skill set and the tools and techniques mm -hmm. uh, and the right connectivity of the uh, domains as well the portfolio management domains as well because yeah. usually a scenario it's not about only one domain in the exam it's about two to three domains uh, you know mixed together and then they are going to ask you like maybe it's also uh, referring governance along with the communication and the strategic management and then they are going to ask you something and you need to connect the things and the tools and techniques and the inputs and outputs in the right manner so this is a, about uh, this knowledge test not about the memorization not really about the memorization memorization works but not 100% in the exam right uh, okay, uh, so in the interest of time, uh, Philip, we need to like just be very quick because one important uh, area we have not touched with so far, the application. Uh, so I would like to tell everyone that uh, Philip has come to me for uh, his mentorship when his application was already approved, although I do provide 100% uh, uh, PFMP and PGMP and PMP and uh, like every credential related application support. But Philip's application was uh, approved by uh, some other uh, mentor and the trainer. However, we would like to cover that. But what was your uh, experience <laughs> in that regard? Like, uh, was that easily approved, or uh, was there a trouble? Yeah. yeah. No, so it, it went quite quite clearly. So, a mentor did not help with my application. Actually, I wrote it by myself because I, um, for the previous certification, I did it as well by myself. So I kind of understood the concept of the application. So uh, I didn't have a mentor support. But if this is your really the first time you're doing this, definitely go with the support that any guidance is you really did more that than all helpful. By yourself? Uh, you did not really go yeah, to all by myself. All by yourself. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. And how much time uh, yeah. did it take for the approval? Like both approvals? Uh, two and a half months. Two and a half months, like for both the approvals. Yeah. Okay. And uh, did yeah, you, so the, so for the for the approval plus the panel panel review. Okay, so did your application go months. in uh, audit as well, uh, or like it was no. just normal? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Two so two and a half months. Yeah. Uh, when you wrote it all by yourself without any help and any expense. Yeah. Okay, but usually. Yeah. No, there was no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you go to a mentor like that, that's just a general uh, opinion because I I like I very. Uh, often uh, write uh, the applications so uh, that's my experience that usually when you go to an expert or a mentor uh, for application writing then on average pmi can approve uh, your application or usually my applications are approved my written applications are approved within two to three weeks maximum at times it's within mm -hmm. hours as well at times yep so that depends so uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can maybe i uh, actually i had my i asked my first mentor to review the application before submitting and why i say i, I didn't review it because the, 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 what what i got as a return as a comment was just to change one or two words in the whole application applications are like a big essay of your experience combining this with the pfm pmi pfmp uh, uh knowledge i don't know how to say materials right so you need to not only to provide experience but you need to provide experience from the pmi point of view right so you need to use the wordings and then categorization and then the processes that PMI 
lists in SPM, right? And also maybe then mention ITTOs. But yeah, the right, dragon, apply, yeah, the right dragons and the PMI yeah. language should be there in the application for, uh, for the exactly. approvals. Yes, so this is what they look for. Exactly. And the right mindset, the portfolio management mindset that they yeah. Yeah. right. Uh, okay, uh, so one very important question for, uh, that people usually ask from the uh, experts or from the uh, people who have uh, who have done this uh, certification, that what is the return? Because you know there's a heavy investment involved uh, in in these credentials, uh, like the monetary investment as well as the investment of your time, energy, and the other things that you reprioritize because of uh, these uh, things. So uh, people usually come to me and uh, like this is a very often question uh, asked by me that uh, asked to me that uh, uh, why do we go for this investment? Uh, wh what is the return? So what is your answer to this? That how do you see the return on investment uh, on such investments? Right. What okay. So well. Yeah. That, 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 that's perfect. So I have a really nice story around this one. So um, <laughs> I'm. I know I didn't say this at the beginning, so I'm Croatian. So it's a small country in, in Europe and uh, I went abroad. So I'm currently living in Germany. So for me uh, to move to Germany, in, at least in my experience and what I've uh, came across and then both professionally and culturally, without a PMI certification, I would not be able to um, get a job that I had had or have have uh, gotten when I moved to Germany. So because of the PMI, actually, I was able to move to a different country, move uh, to a different role, and actually do the work that they, that I actually do. And step by step, right? This uh, I've seen that the PMI, even though maybe on on in that moment of time, when you do the certification, it doesn't really kind of you don't see the value because yeah, you invested the time, you invested the money, you got the certification, and then now what, right? But what actually happens, it, it's, I think that's the one of the, I would say, even life lessons or life stories that when you invest into something, right, the return on investment, you don't see immediately, right? So on, on terms of the certification, the knowledge in general, right, the return on investment is, comes later, but with a higher, right, with a higher return, if you will. So in my case, I did my PMP, I moved and uh, uh, moved to another country, got a new job and et cetera. And I saw return on investment after the five and a half years, right? And it was it was really, it was substantial, right? And what I do expect, and I've seen this trend with, so it's not, the PMI is not the only certification I have. I have run about, I think in total now 40 certifications. Um, so for zero, really a lot. And what I've seen with, each and every certification, it was really, it was growing, right? So what I do expect from the PFMP now currently is that return on investment, I'm not going to see it now today. I'm not going to see it maybe tomorrow. I'm not going to see it maybe next one or two or three years, but I do expect to see return on investment in five to 10 years. But as I mentioned, so at least in Germany, right? If, you, if you're aspiring to change your careers, um, so, for example, I'm currently also, we, we are hiring, we have the open roles for our delivery managers, right? And because of the amount of the people that are on the market, so I'm now giving you a little bit of insights as well, on, on the amount of the people that are on the market, we need to really specify even more the candidates we want, right? So the quality of the candidate, we want to obviously attract as the most qualified candidates as we can on the market. And for that reason, right, the, the, the certifications come really good in play. And if you want... A really aspiring person who for the characteristic like uh, uh, it's really the person is really curious want to learn more or wants to evolve right what do you expect to see from this person is let's say increase in in learnings uh, over the years right and the increase of the learnings you see when you submit the cv right so that's now again a career tip right you see the certifications listed right so this actually helps for the for the people who are hiring to understand, ah, okay, this is a curious person. This is a person who has a tendency to learn. And it's not just saying it. I see this on the, on, on the CV. So this kind of, you know, makes me a little bit curious. I want to meet this person, right? Opens the door for the interview. And this is how I, uh, I would answer this return on investment. Let's see this is happening maybe now or maybe in, in, in one or two years. I see this happening maybe five to 10 years. And I'm certain it's going to happen because I've, I've experienced this for the last 12 years. So 
I totally that agree. With you. I know it's a little bit longer one, but uh, I think uh, I think. No, no, uh, I totally uh, agree with you, and that is the very uh, like a wonderful answer to this question. Actually, the expected answer to this question because people come and ask me that if I'm going to do this credential, am I going to get a new job? Am I my my salary is going to raise fifty percent, hundred percent, or um, am, am I going to be accommodated in this market, in this region, this that? All of that can happen. I am not saying that you should not be going after the monetary benefits. You should be going after the monetary benefits as well. Uh, but it should not be the only reason why you should be going for these credentials. The primary yeah. reason should be the personal development. Because if you are going to become a better yes. version of your own self day by day, it's, it's like a baby steps. It should not be like overnight transformation uh, in your personality, in your uh, professional uh, development. It's like a slow, slowly, gradual, uh, gradually, it's going to happen. So, just work towards your personal and professional development. Become better day by day, right? And you eventually start uh, getting highlighted among the crowd. And once that happens, then your worth automatically starts increasing in any market. You can be accommodated in any industry, in any market, in any organization. You can be accommodated, but it happens like gradually it, it's not a, because some, something that you are going to get overnight it can be lost overnight as well right I, I don't believe in the in that idea that like within a week's time uh, i should be getting a new job within a month's time i should be uh, promoted uh, with this credential no it's not like that it, it should not be like that actually the primary reason is to improve your knowledge base is to improve uh, your way of working is to help yourself and your people your team your organization your customers your suppliers like all the stakeholders that you are working with with the better knowledge you have it's not about learning your by your own self it's about sharing the knowledge it's about paying back to the community so that is one other reason why people especially those people who are influential in their organization who are working at some powerful role or at some influential level they can actually make a difference a better difference than the other people who are not in that position to, uh, you know, to uh, influence or guide or uh, support the people. So this should be the mindset for going for these credentials. And that's why we highly encourage to do it the right manner because credentials can be done like just uh, like pick up two to three mocks, practice. You can sit in the exam and maybe you can pass that as well. But that's not the right way to go about it. The right way is to learn, uh, connect. To that the relatedness is very important the questions are very important uh like asking the why's and the what's is very important and uh putting yourself in that framework in that mindset is very important and then you practice and you sit in the exam then you would justify uh, the expectations of pmi and and uh, any of these credentials right so this should be the right uh you know the right reason why you should be going for these credentials at least i go for any credential for this reason for improving myself to become a better version of myself than that i used to be yesterday that that's my primary reason of going with any credential anyways so that's a very wonderful session to live with you uh in the in the very uh end i would like to like uh, ask you for any final advice that you would like to go uh, to give to the PM, PFMP aspirants or the people who are actually willing to go for this credential, what is your suggestion to them? What would you like to advise to them? Then we will go to the uh, question answer sessions uh, in the last five to 10 minutes. Well, uh, to, to be honest, I find very, the, the, all the PMI exams, I found them, especially this credential for me, as mentioned, was really difficult because I needed to unlearn, but. I would definitely advise because the it broaders the perspective, right? It really opens your eyes to the certain stuff that is happening around you, right? The, the behaviors, the work environment, it, it kind of makes you think about the certain way how you approach the solutions or even the problems. So I would definitely encourage the people, if you, if you think about the certification, go for it. Um, and I would definitely encourage you if you want to really to save the money and you want to save the time so not spend a lot of time and not repeating the exams definitely seek out the mentor so for me i can only say i had 
really bad and really good experience with the mentors and that's why i would say of uh, tuba for me was really uh let's say she she brought back my confidence in the mentors so i'm kind of again okay ah there is a there are good people as well <laughs> on the market so i can only recommend right going for a mentor and as I mentioned for me it was had, had a really good experience with tuba so i can only recommend you know go with her as well if not go with the try the mocks if you don't want the mentorship they're really good as well but um, you will for me it was really i realized really soon that uh, the pfmp is much broader and as mentioned it's not everything is written in the spm it's not everything written in the book so you need to spend some time of learning and understanding the materials and the topics outside of the book so um, in their mentor plays a really critical role so i would highly recommend going for the mentor Yes, uh, in in this regard, I would like to add one point that uh, uh, that's a very good point that uh, Philip has mentioned. That standard uh, by PMI, it's a very good book. Uh, like from a concept perspective, it's not bad, but uh, it's actually very good. But it does not provide you the relevant templates and the samples and the examples and the scenarios and the use cases. And that actually at times. Uh, makes it very boring as well very very boring and very dry and uh, most of the time people are not able to connect to it so this is where the the right mentor or the trainer would help you uh, they are going to provide you the right uh, samples the use cases the examples maybe uh, coming right from your own industry so that you you are able to relate to them as well and uh, this is uh, not something that pmi would be providing you uh, this is one area th where they should be improving uh, maybe they are going to improve uh, in the uh, coming years. But right now, uh, this is the case. So, yes, I agree. When I was doing my PFMP, I was also struggling uh, with, with the same thing, right? So, yeah, uh, this this is one thing that you should be keeping in mind that if you are preparing that all by yourself, that you need to come up with the right, uh, you know, uh, right uh, understanding of the concepts, their uh, consolidation, their integration, and coming up with the right scenarios and examples and uh, use cases by yourself because standard uh, is not going to provide that. Maybe mentor is going to provide that, but the standard is not going to provide that, right? Okay, uh, so thank you very much, Philip, for this wonderful session. We have a few questions from the participants and um, I am going to answer uh, the questions uh, uh, present in the comment box. If uh, any one of you have other questions, maybe just unmute yourself, raise the hand and we can do the question answer sessions uh, right away, right? Because we don't have uh, too much time remaining. We have only 10 minutes remaining. So uh, we need to do that very quickly. So Shish uh, Shishank is uh, asking about the application. Maybe this question is uh, for me. Uh, he uh, Or maybe uh, Philip can answer that as well, but I can quickly answer this. He is asking that what is the uh, process of filling the application for the second stage, which is termed as the panel review. Uh, see, the application is not different for the first and the second uh, stage of approval. It's just one application which passes through a process, right? So there's no application uh, separately for the second stage. Um, uh, it's just one submission which passed through the first approval. If that is done, then you need to pay your fees and then it uh, automatically goes in the second approval. And if the second approval is passed, then uh, you are eligible to sit in the exam and all of the process is offline. There is no one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews or something like that. Or there is no panel interview as well. It's just an offline process, right? So uh, if you need some help with the application, maybe you can separately connect with me. I can guide you with the application and uh, with the template or sample if you need anything like that. Uh, we can talk about that uh, separately, Shashan. I think you have already messaged me on WhatsApp. So I'm going to take that uh, separately with you. Okay? Because that's a long conversation. Maybe we are not able to do that uh, over here. Okay, then uh, uh, Chintan is saying that he is going to do the first attempt of his PFMP on 1st of August. Uh, all the very best, Chintan. And I am really hoping that you are going to do uh, great on your exam and you are going to pass that in the first attempt. But one advice, uh, if you are doing the mocks, go for the right mocks. It's not only about the mocks, it's about the right mocks. Uh, which uh, Philip has uh, clearly mentioned in his conversation. Um, then uh, uh, Sayyid Hassan is appreciating that this is a very informative session. Uh, we are glad that you're liking it. Uh, so Chintan again is mentioning that he has solved uh, a few, uh, a couple of uh, mocks and uh, he's uh, aiming to do a, a few more mocks. And uh, he has just realized that the practicing is way more uh, helpful 
than uh, reading the book. And uh, he thinks that uh, solving the paper is going to uh, get him uh, pass the exam. Uh, see, I would uh, slightly disagree here. I think both are important, getting the right concepts and applying that while practicing. I think both are equally important, 50-50%. So some, uh, like at times people say that we have learned the standard, we have seen your video sessions and uh, we have seen your slides and I think uh, we can sit in the exam. I would say no, practicing is important, but only practicing is not important. Uh, uh, if you want to do that uh, with the right perspective, the right expectations and the right way, then uh, the, the, the standard itself, the knowledge of the standard itself is important. This is what the credential is about. Knowing the best practices by PMI for the portfolio management. This is what the credential is about. Maybe you are already doing portfolio management. Maybe you are already working as director or VP or head of the department or GM or uh, some equivalent position. But are you doing the, are you applying the right, right way of working that globally leaders and uh, uh, you know, portfolio managers and uh, the, the people who have spent 30 years, 40 years, 50 years in the industry. If yes, then maybe you are on the right track. If no, then maybe you need to bridge that knowledge gap. And this is where the standard helps you. So uh, reading the book is important, but maybe uh, you are finding that boring. So this is where the mentor would come in. Maybe go for someone who is going to give you some interesting way of explaining that, right? But um, uh, Gaining the right concepts is very important, I would say. Uh, then Sabir is saying that he is going to uh, do the exam in the first week of August. Uh, uh, all the very best, Sabir. Sabir is already my student, so I know that he is uh, aiming for his exam. All the very best, and I know you are going to do really good. Um, if you have any question, of course, you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, then... Uh, Shashank is saying uh, again that uh, can I share a draft application? Yes, of course I can share uh, samples and templates. I do have that, uh, but you need to contact uh, to me separately for that. And I think we are done with the with the questions. If anyone has any other question than this, uh, they can just unmute themselves and uh, they can ask that. Any questions by anyone? No, are we good? Because we are uh, almost on time and we are ready to. Uh, wind up as well. If there are no questions, then we can uh, wind up the session. Okay, thank you very much, Philip, for joining us. And oh, okay, so uh, Sayed Hassan is saying project evaluation is part of PFMP, like calculating IRR, NPV, DSF, uh, whether the project is worthwhile to take up. That is project and financial evaluation. So, uh, see, uh, uh, whether the project or the program is worth an investment or not, that is the conversation in portfolio management. Like, uh, should we be prioritizing it? Should we be even accepting that uh, as a component? Uh, but there are multiple other ways of doing that as well, recommended by PMI. It's not really IRR and DSF specifically. Uh, yes, IRR and NPB can play like an attribute, an important attribute in the selection. But... Uh, Usually, uh, some other uh, areas can also be considered like uh, benefits cost analysis or, uh, you know, uh, payback period or some other areas as well. But we do not really need to calculate this. It's not about calculating them. It's about uh, comparing them from the benefits perspective and then choosing the right benefits. So if your question is that, do we need to really calculate this IRR or NPV or DSF in the portfolio management? And the answer is no. No, we, we don't really need to calculate this. We need to use this already provided data to evaluate and analyze the projects and the programs the right way, right? And whether they are worth the investment or not. That, that's the conversation in the portfolio management. Uh, so uh, any, any other questions by anyone? Okay. So thank you very much, Philip, for joining. Uh, that was a, a wonderful session and very insightful session. I really en enjoyed this conversation and I hope the participants enjoyed that as well. Uh, and uh, thank you guys, uh, all the participants for joining us as well. Uh, so if uh, any one of you is interested in our application services or mentorship for any uh, PMI certification, specifically PFMP, I've already provided the channels and I'm uh, 
uh, readily available on LinkedIn and other social media platforms as well. So you can reach out to me over there as well. I've already shared my WhatsApp number. You can reach out to me over there as well. So thank you very much uh, for joining us. I will come back very soon with a new uh, candidate and with some new insights and lessons learned. Till then, take care and goodbye. Goodbye, Philip. Goodbye.